Today, like I said, we're talking remittances. Uh, International Day of Family uh, remittances is today, and we're marking it right here. Uh, trust me, a uh, very important element. Now, the International Day of Remitt Family Remittances uh, recognizes uh, the more than 200 million migrant workers, women and men, who send money home to over 800 million family members. Now, this day further highlights the great resilience of migrant workers in the face of economic insecurities, natural and climate-related disasters, and a global pandemic. Now, the remittance flows have increased fivefold over the past 20 years, serving an account to clinical capacity during economic downturns in recipient countries. Now, COVID-19 has been a formidable test for global remittances. However, early forecast of sharp declines greatly underestimated the resilience in remittance flow. So uh, this is, uh, you know, a very important element when it comes to, you know, uh, sending money, especially from abroad, from our brothers and sisters in the diaspora to, uh, you know, countries, uh, receiving countries, let me put it that way, because they're not, they're not only sending to countries in Africa, they are sending it worldwide. So if you say you're sending all this to Africa, that's not even fair. It's to receiving countries because we have countries that are meant to receive these remittances through uh, some of these uh, m uh, financial, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, facilitators generally. So Hafiz Gunu is here uh, on the discussion zone. Chairman, how are Most you? Ready. Nice, nice, nice. When was the last time you received cash from abroad? Last time. Yeah. Oh, just last month. Just last month. You yeah. had to go to the bank? No. Okay. Right in the comfort of my room. Right. I got it on my mobile money right. account. So. <laughs> it's amazing how... It's a nice you, feeling. Uh, I know, right? I know, right? There's nothing like it. Yeah. And it's amazing. And I would say I'm delighted to, to, to talk about how it has actually changed and progressively Charlie, better. It has made life easier. You know, because, I mean, let's just take our minds back before we get back to the current issue. How we used to receive money uh, back in the days uh, for me <laughs> i remember the back of my collar okay was my go-to point if i receive package from my father hmm. i know that he has unstitched part of the collar okay fixed it in there stitched it back and so that's my go-to point and yeah so and it was like i'm back, looking back we're talking about somewhere two thousand ninety nine two thousand two thousand and yeah, okay. one Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Two ninety nine, two thousand. I remember. I remember that. Yeah, I remember one time. I think I, the the amount he sent. I think I I I think I didn't remove all. So I, there was this thing that was I in my shirt for like two months. I didn't yeah. know. It was just that was just whatever I put it now. You're walking around with a dollar bill. Or <laughs> like, it was even in safer. You know. Safer. I think. I think. Yeah. I okay. think. I think one thousand five hundred safers. Yeah, at that safe at that time. So uh, anytime I, you know, try to it felt uncomfortable. Yeah, it always comes back up. So one day I'm like, no, this thing here. So I have to look again because the uniform actually was a new one. It was a bit thicker. Okay. Yeah, you because know, yeah. So I was like, ah. one day Charlie, I go it's like jackpots. <laughs> you don't know how I felt that day. He was like, hey, but I mean that that was how we used to be. You yeah. know, you had to it had to be through someone, someone you know. Oh, and, and going through the post office, expensive, could take longer, mm. and all of that. So, uh, anyway, Hafiz, let me just bring you in. Yeah, International Day of Family Remittances. Right. I mean, I mean, you spoke about it in the intro. Mm. It's a day set aside to recognize mm. the efforts of migrants. Right. I mean, you can talk about it and not talk about the efforts of uh, migrants. Absolutely. And also promote the development impact of remittances. Mm. Because when you take it, of course... I mean, when they send the money, mm. you realize that it changes hands and, mm. you know, it affects a lot of lives uh, downstream. Mm. So you realize that a lot of lives are affected by the monies they send. Mm. And now, let's understand that, I mean, remittances, we're not just talking about monies, mm. uh, sometimes even goods as well. Absolutely. Yes, constitutes uh, remittances here. Yeah. And in this context, I, I think, uh, let's make it clear that, I mean, it has changed. We're not just talking oh, about yes. cross borders. But even within the country, mm -hmm. yes, where you have to send, when you're in a particular region, you mm. have to send something back uh, home to family and relatives uh, in, in certain, certain parts of the country. I mean, we see that happen all the time. Now, I'm, I mean, speaking of migrants, uh, ideally everyone would like to 
work uh, at a place they find comfortable mm-hmm. where they they would like to be accepted and yeah. you know feel okay uh for one reason or the other these days migration has become a thing of uh necessity rather mm-hmm. than choice right because mm. i mean ask anyone to drop a bucket list of the things they want to do and move down from one place exactly <laughs> you'll find it, it in there somewhere that. i want to travel yes. Someone is telling us Seychelles, 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 mm. Seychelles, Seychelles, Seychelles all, all Madagascar, here, Madagascar, mm. mentioning all these places yeah. all over. But here, here's the thing: it happens every now and then, and these migrants are faced with all kinds of trouble. Absolutely, there are issues of racism, issues of discrimination, mm. issues of uh, border closures, if, and all. Even issues so of life and death, because some yeah. actually don't even make it back. Don't home, even make you know? it. Yes, yeah. and so when they get there, mm. I mean, uh, they work their socks off mm. just so they can fend for themselves and right. also try to leave something behind for you know the families back home, depending on them, True. depending on uh, the you know the little amount of change they they have left uh, over there, True. just so uh, it can you know do something. I mean, you are sharing your life experience. I remember back in the day, that is even in the late 90s as well, mm. when uh, my dad used to send, I think, 50 bucks. Yeah. Then, right. Yeah, but that was, a, that was, that was huge. huge. That was, was huge, huge back yeah. in the day, considering the exchange rate then. Mm. Yes, but it went a long way, I mean, uh, to this point. So you realize that, I mean, <laughs> there's no, nothing small when, um, I mean, you can consider it as something small. Mm. It, it, it did actually go a long way to help you. But then, if you look at remittances in general, the process of money exchanging hands or goods, yeah. I mean, it's it's undergone massive change in the oh last yeah, yeah. 10, 15 yeah. years. There's a lot of changes so that much. have occurred in that uh, domain. I mean, back in the day, from you know looking for friends to send it to, to mm-hmm. you know sending stashing money in yeah. weird places just I so know, right? <laughs> you can you can avoid people tampering with yeah. uh, whatever it is or whatever amount you send. Then I mean later we we I mean there was Western Union wire transfers and mm-hmm. everything seems to have eased up uh, things a bit. But then I think the biggest game changer in uh, the remittances area has been you know the telcos. Oh yeah, moving into the that telcos space. Telcos really <laughs> brought a new a new exactly. feeling. Yeah, a I mean they, they changed the game in there. To and the whole thing. Yes, uh, to the point I think even the banking sector there was this got affected. Yes, uh, the uh, relationship between hardly. telcos and banks. Became frosty. Yeah, uh, I know, right? In these parts, I remember people hardly visit the bank. That's the thing. The average person would own a phone before they even think of a bank account. Exactly. I don't know if you get yeah, exactly. that makes yeah. sense. So I mean, I I remember banks, you know, going at government and like, uh, g- g- try to control these guys, you know, get them yeah. on the leash. But mm. the government responds like, hey, it's a free market. And besides, they so they they are one of the biggest contributors or p- payers of tax. Exactly. You know. Yeah. So so <laughs> for them, I, I mean. Venturing into the financial services department, mm. I think, really forced, uh, you know, banking sector, the banking sector to reevaluate the way they did things. Mm. I mean, if even when you wanted to send money, mm. I mean, uh, the 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 charges alone, transaction charges, mm. was something else. Exactly. But these days, I think the telcos have come in there and made it so easy. You have you know bankers so running after people I'm instead, and, and yeah, yes, it has made life a lot like a hunting uh, job now. Exactly, huh? a lot more comfortable mm. uh, because of all this. I mean, when you talk about it, you uh, you you look at the case of uh, uh, M-Pesa in South uh, in, in in Kenya. In Kenya, right? Yes, mm. yes. So when Safari. Uh, Safari Safari uh, com. com introduced it in 2007. Mm. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, and M-Pesa look at is, is one of the biggest stuff it's happening one of the biggest. In, in not just Kenya, but Eastern Africa. Look, if you talk about M- M-Pesa, mm. I mean, when they started in 2007, by 2011, the amount of transactions they dealt with domestically, okay, far outnumbered what Western Union did globally. You're kidding. M-Pesa. Yes. M-Pesa. Wow. So wow. That's how huge uh, it became in just that four that's, years. That's, yeah. Yeah. So, yes. And if, when you go to the south of Africa, mm. you're talking Zimbabwe, South Africa, there's Mukuru. And Mukuru. M- yes. Right. And the Mukuru, that is, uh, and for them, you even send groceries and everything. Okay. Yes. Uh, it's not just about money mm. as well. So, and I think even for them, they got some 75%, uh, you know, m- more businesses uh, than usual mm. because of the COVID, mm. people having to stay home and everything. So, mm. uh, for those that would naturally be inclined to want to use fiscal cash, right. they were forced to use mm. uh, you know, these services uh, right. from the comfort right. of their home. So, I mean, you know how you know a, a good thing comes out of a bad Absolutely. situation. And I think uh, that was what happened with uh, these telcos in, in that department. Mm. In the West, well, we, had, we saw what happened in the case of uh, mobile money and you know, in, 
in 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 Ghana everything. So mm. Mm. these things uh, have changed a lot uh, when we talk about remittances. Anyway. Okay, the show was Africa Daily on Africa Global Radio. We're discussing uh, international remittances because today is International Family Remittance Day, right? So I mean, it's all about. Uh, you know, transporting, sending money, wire transfers, and what have you. International Day of Family Remittance, uh, we're talking today. And uh, we will also look at uh, some of the challenges or some of the uh, issues involved in there. Because in as much as it's now easy to, to send money at the comforts of your home, seated on your laptop, you just do your transfer, and someone receives it in other parts of the world uh, through their mobile phone or portable devices, uh, other fraudsters have also found their own ways to infiltrate the system and, you know, uh, make it unpleasant, actually. And also, this also goes a long way to affect uh, the senders, too, you know, because whenever they are sending, especially if you're not from that particular country and you're, you're a migrant, you're a worker, there are also other challenges because of the issue of fraudulent activities and scam and what have you. But let me speak to Mami on this particular day. Mami? Hi, Barry. When was the last time you received all you sent? <laughs> Which one? Did you receive or did you send? You know, sending money up there uh -huh. is really hard. Which is up there, like to heaven? No, I mean, if I say up there... I mean why, why are we... Come to think of Why do we always say up there? Like, why do we always say up there? Are they up? <laughs> I, well, well, depending on your location. I mean, <laughs> but, no, but, but looking at Africa and the US... I usually don't even like it when... They say up there. Up there. Even when you come down south here, then someone looks at it. Are you from up there? Up where? <laughs> so and you look at... I think if you look at the map, they are at we the western part. up there because, you know, the north is up like this. The northern... Uh, in, North in America? To, no, to no, answer what it's, happens... It's derogatory. It's, 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 it's supposed to be an insult or something. So mm. uh, what do you mean by But it? if I no, ask you... You can say a name. Yeah, no, I'm from, no, I'm from the up US. Up there is like you're uh -huh. looking at the map. The north is at the top. No, we, are fond, of, we are fond of saying up tea. It's more of like a lingua franca. <laughs> up tea. No, up that way. I get. But <laughs> there, are, there are certain questions about up there and it's, it's supposed to piss you off. Or anyway, but questions are good. Up there. The only up there. Why are you feeling? The only <laughs> easy, <laughs> man. Anyway, the only... I'm just saying it's usually... I would say up there in relation to location. I know, right? Because but on I the map, Accra is by the coast, which is down. Uh -huh. And then the north, like northern region, Tamale, uh -huh. Upper Ooh. East, Upper West. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, he's talking about when people ask you, you're coming from up there. Do you come from up there? No, he's wait. talking about America. He's I'm talking, talking, talking about, I'm like, talking about America. I'm talking like, about the US. When you come America, down south, he's usually... talking about, I started by talking about America, right? Okay. And then he's talking about, like, we, even when you come to Ghana, uh -huh. and let's say you're from the north, That's a they ask you, older. are you yes, coming was from up there? And I'm up saying that is, is like location. No, that one is a different. We still, don't worry. It's a different conversation, <laughs> but we'll talk about it later. Not today. I just always see But the thing, yeah. Anyway, so when was the last time you received or you sent? Last time I received money. Oh, so you're on the oh receiving end. I've tried to send money to London um, for like the past month, like since last month. And I oh. downloaded a couple of apps, and apparently you cannot do that. Really? Unless it's a bank transfer. Okay, that's that. Okay. So that is kind of hard. Okay, we'll, but we'll receiving talk about that mm. when last did I receive money from the states? I think that would be like sometime last year or maybe like early this year or something okay through what you had to go to the bank or no, it was no, no, through no, your no, mobile no. phone it was through my mobile easy yeah easy, easy right peasy. okay so international day of family remittance i mean we're 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 all aware of how some people how most people migrate mm. to to seek greener pastures right in other countries and then they go up and every month they have to send something down mm. To take care of the family. Right. So usually remittances come from the West. Because uh -huh. so long as you have moved uh -huh. to go look for greener pastures. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, sometimes they don't even, sometimes they say, sometimes they don't say, but you're expected uh -huh. to take care of the people at home. Right. So we see money, cash flow mm. from the Americas, from the Londons coming day in, day out. Mm. And it's very important because 
I mean, some people depend on it to survive. Absolutely. Some people go up there. Some people even leave their kids. Mm -hmm. They go to work. Before you know, they're sending school fees. Mm -hmm. They're sending feeding fee. Mm. They're sending money for provisions. They even, they're sending so much money for so many different things. I mean, sometimes they send money to like buy land for me. Right. Build a house for me. Mm. Do this, do that, do this. So I think this day is a great day because it happens. Mm. Mm. day in day out and a theme for this year's um, international day of family remittances is recovery and resilience through digital and financial inclusion okay right the show is africa daily on africa global radio you can also join us on the conversation uh tell us when's the last time you received uh, something some cash or maybe a good generally it's not just about the money it may be a good as well because we have the fedex and the dhls and what have you uh, you know, uh, facilitating these movements. You can also share with us how it was or how we used to be back in the days, how you used to receive money or goods or packages uh, and all of that. Hafiz, yeah. uh, l let's talk about, uh, in as much as life has been made easier thanks to technology, it, it seems there are also challenges in there where, uh, because sometimes y you realize that some of our brothers sisters out there when they are going to send maybe because i know of a, a cousin of mine who currently any t he has issues going to the bank to send money because of that a lot of questions there are a lot of questions like a whole lot of questions and it's kind of like sending money to my family so and, and you see sometimes i think the des i don't know if it's about the destination or what but there's a lot of, it's kind of like Back in the days, you go send money and you're good to go. But now, because of the issues or the activities of fraudsters, mm -hmm. it has increasingly uh, made people more suspicious to whoever is sending and wherever you're coming from, the kind of person you are and all of this. So it's kind of like a bit rusty in there too at the same time. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's rather unfortunate. I mean, we are all having to suffer the, you know, the... Uh, the effects of the activities of mm. these uh, you fraudsters know, or scrupulous, uh, you know, characters. Mm. That is. So, I mean, and you know, talking about even fraudsters and you know having to send money or receive money. Mm. Uh, I think Mami mentioned her difficulty about you know sending, sending money to the UK. To the UK, yes. Yeah. Uh, and if, if if I'm going to hazard a guess, that's because I mean a lot of the time in such countries you have a lot of m people m sending more or receiving from these parts rather mm. than send. sending. Yeah. Yes. And so a lot of the time, even when you're sending here, because of certain activities of these fraudsters, mm. you would have to, you know, bypass a lot of security questions mm. before you. I mean, in certain places, I mean, it's more stringent when it comes to some of these things and the protection of data right. and laws surrounding that is more stringent and more thorough, if I want to put it that way. Mm -hmm. And like yeah, a lot of the time, uh, you get to bypass certain questions and you find that. Uh, it's, it's, it's not as difficult as, uh, you know, they make it. So you have that as well. And also, uh, one issue or challenge or difficulty with, uh, you know, having telcos venture into this space is the issues issue regarding marketing. Yes, every mm -hmm. now and then you have, uh, you know, uh, you, you are being bombarded with certain information and right. other things that you wouldn't need. Uh, it has even caused some to impulse buy. Exactly. Uh, I mean, mm. You're not interested in shopping. All you of a sudden, this thing pops up, yeah. pops up in your, on, your, on your timeline or whatever, mm. and then suddenly you're thinking of uh, making a purchase. And, and, and we've seen that happen all the time. I mean, uh, I remember when I was struggling to uh, d doing some research on getting a toilet seat with my dad on my phone, yes, uh, trying to make a purchase mm. here and there. Doing that, I, I did. I think like a week later, I kept getting all these things about. I'm like, come on, it's a need, it's not a want. I didn't go about <laughs> checking out toilet <laughs> seats, <laughs> so, so he kept on getting ads <laughs> and all. <laughs> what is, I mean, so and, and affordable it's, prizes it's and so all. annoying. And there are even places I've never stepped foot into, but mm. you have them wishing you happy birthday every now and then, yeah. Yeah. Don't you get that? Yes. Uh, so, I mean, it's obvious that I mean, they are putting out your information or selling them to mm. you know companies that actually would want to do something to advertise, marketing, to advertise uh, certain their degree. products and, right uh, uh, in certain jurisdictions that's not how it works mm. but yes uh, in these parts i think that's some of the excesses that sometimes you don't even want but you you tend to get mm. but uh moving away from that let's do some numbers mm -hmm. so now <laughs> remittances alone in uh, sub-saharan africa mm. uh that's last year we're talking about some 48 billion uh, U.S. dollars that brought Whoa. into the economy. 48 billion U.S. dollars. Yes, yes. And that's even considered a decline because of Nigeria. 
in their numbers, uh, 28%. Mm. Yeah. Now, in 2020, let's look at the top three countries for remittances outflows. Okay, so yes, we're looking at so countries that received that, that more. sent more. That sent more outflows. It went out to out, their okay. country. So, okay, so we're looking at the Western countries. Exactly. So top three countries where money was sent more from or from. Right, okay, exactly. Right. So number one on the list was the United States. Okay. Yeah, just last year, and we are talking of some sixty-eight billion US dollars. Sixty-eight. Yes. So that's some huge money. Now number two, I was thinking it was going to be China, but. Number two on the list is United Arab Emirates. Dubai. Yes. And I mean, yeah. <laughs> Dubai. <laughs> yes. And we are talking some 43 billion US dollars. So yes. we have we have migrants in Dubai. Wow. No. I thought that's more like an economical space. Because I know I know people go to Dubai. I know mm-hmm. I know that, but I know people go to Dubai to to purchase goods, come yeah, back and sell. No, some you know? people go but to Dubai to work. I know yeah. um, a cousin of a friend who's mm. currently in Dubai. And he's well, I know a few, but not as much as those in the Actually US. Like the Gulf. I mean, a lot of people go in the South. Oh, okay, the, okay, yes, okay. Yes, okay. So right. You're right. You're mm-hmm. right. Okay. So, I, I and agree. third on the list, we have Saudi Arabia. And we are talking of some 35 billion US dollars. Saudi Arabia? Yeah. So why, why are people not going to China? <laughs> What's happening, man? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Wow. I don't know. Uh, but maybe because of COVID. Top three. This, this is just last ah, year. Ah, right. Mm-hmm. So yes, COVID, yes. That explains it. COVID that explains have, uh, it. You know, played, played the role. our route. Uh. Good. So mm. now let's look at top five inflows. Mm. Yes, that countries that receive worldwide. More money. Yes, right. Our, our brothers did it. Some. Yeah, Charlie. <laughs> Charlie, the number is on our head. We don't miss even a, a digit. But okay. let's hear it. Yes. So number one on the list is India. Okay. India, India with has received 83 the three billion US dollars. Last oh. year, Chile, eighty-three billion years. I mean, well, you lo- you'll understand. Is it is it the num? Could that be because I'm, of I'm the, the population? I'm thinking it's a numbers game. I'm thinking it's a numbers game. Is that because that could that be the the because but of China, the population? Or China has more population than India? Yeah, exactly, but China came second with sixty billion on US the receiving dollars. end. Yes, mm. inflows. Mm. And third on the list, guess, Latin America. Uh, hold on, hold on, Latin, Latin America. America. No, I'm just no, I'm just within saying the Latin, Latin American Latin zone. America. Brazil, no. I have another take. Uh, Chicharito. Mexico. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, okay. Mexico, uh, we are talking some 43 billion US dollars. Yes. Fourth on the list is the Philippines. The with, Filipinos. Yes, with 35 billion. And lastly, there's an African country in there. Nigeria. Doing us proud. Nigeria. <laughs> Nigeria. <laughs> I just told you, Nigeria, it wasn't so good last year. Yes. So... That was for South Saharan Africa. So this country is actually in the north of Africa. Okay, so we're looking at Libya. Mm. Oh, come on. Libya. I mean, Li- well, Libya hasn't okay. been Libya for a while. That's well. what I'm saying. So maybe due to that. But Northern African country? Yes, no, Northern African country. Egypt? Egypt. 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 Egypt with mm. some 30 billion US dollars. So people are not sending <laughs> to Ghana. What's happening to our brothers? They tell them we, we go bow. Like... <laughs> What are they doing? Corona happened. <laughs> oh no! L- okay, last year. Well, that's uh, so these are a justified excuse. Year, yeah. But interesting, interesting. Wow. Well, I know with Corona, Egyptians are taking more money. So. Hey, that's what, hey, Charlie. Oh wow! But I have another concern that has to do with uh, sending within our zone. Let's talk about Africa here because it's not easy sending, mm-hmm. you know, money. I, I know it, it's possible, but not easy because probably it may be very expensive. You know, I mean, it's very expensive. You get my point. So, I, I, why is it so? I, I don't get it. I, I don't. I don't. Get, it should be easier here. I mean, we talk about how even traveling to one African country to another is so difficult sometimes to to mm. to travel and everything, and even even expensive. So, mm. I, I I think it applies to the remittances as well. Yeah, and uh, when when you talk about uh, you know how difficult it is, uh, you know, sending money, especially on the continent or receiving, right, with charges and everything, I think we'll need an expert to. I think let so. Let us understand yeah, how we really the need to exchange get rates work. Yeah, uh, and it tends in terms of the currency differentials and mm. everything. I think we really need to do exactly. So, so the you know the exchange rates, the naira, the CD, mm. the CFA, and everything. How how do they work and how. You know, and when you talk about even remittances and the banking sectors and the telco, mm. now each country has a way of running their own system. Okay, yeah. so there's no one size fits all system for everywhere. Mm. So that's how come it's I a lot easier to send co- money to certain countries, and it's very it's, it's difficult to send uh, from other countries. So, so for instance, if you are sending, I'm not meaning anything by this, but let's say if you are sending 
from say Nigeria okay to a place like Britain or any other country okay you get asked a lot more questions because of the incidents of you know uh the 409 cases yeah. because it's mm. you're going to get a lot more questions or half people ask you uh, you know half half you know the system mm. being more stringent than when it's coming from a place that is uh that Why has less known? less of these cases in mm. there so it's it's dependent on the country that uh, and what system they are operating mm. uh in there anyway so but then to have a clearer picture of we it need, i think we, yeah we need an economist yes uh, an the picture will best and, explain and i think we'll definitely get these answers as well so yeah we're talking international uh, remittance because today is that day we'll mark international day for family remittances so we don't really have much time on our side but let me pick mommy Abba's a final take on that one so we can uh, move on yeah i mean i think the day we were discuss we we're talking about the the whole remittance thing in the office gloria talked about how um sending money to nigeria was hectic because the charges were so huge mm -hmm. so i think if that if that can be looked at mm. it would help a lot right and i mean we are we are in a day and age where we are championing tech yeah because the world is gradually and gradually becoming an, a digital it is actually it's just making it more it's making it better yeah so it's like we we have to work on finding ways and means mm. to send money to people in the americas and in the londons mm -hmm. without going to the <laughs> without <laughs> Without having to go through the hassle of going to the bank. Because mm. sometimes you can... You know with Momo, you can just send to somebody. I can't remember the last time I actually stepped But nobody go, goes into the bank. I think even no, the posturing of the of, of the banks was like... Uh, this, But eventually it's like, if you can't beat them, join them. So now you can even link your Momo account oh, to Oh, yeah. That's what you do. Actually. Your, your of but course. you yeah, cannot yeah, yeah, yeah. send yeah. money from here to somebody in America through Momo. Why are you interested in America? Oh, it's because... How are sending it to family around? I mean, we no, are doing but something. Maybe. Around but, but, where? But, like, but, but, on but the then, country? Okay, different are you, regions, are you yeah. I think... But oh, I think different regions I want, I in the country? Believe, exactly. Oh, different regions in the country? No, but we I have want, Momo. We I have want to believe Tigo that cash. system is possible because I think I, 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 I heard about it sometime by one of these tel telco giants talking about how you can send money from from here to... to you know, uh, no. send money here abroad. I, I don't. I don't. Uh, from I, here. From here yeah. abroad. Yeah, I think so. The, it it should be possible. It should be. Maybe it may be expensive, but yeah, I think we'll get there. But I think as much as there are people um there taking care of people here, there are people here taking care of people there as well. Exactly. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely. It's like, but they numbers. So I think that's anyway. That is where they would want to consider. Yeah. yeah. Okay, because, because by the looks of it, it's like a numbers game, and 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 this has a but huge impact on the economy as well. You know, it has a huge because the the more you receive, it also contributes to your uh, economic outputs and what have you. But then, like Hafez said, we're definitely gonna get an economist to you know try to run us through how this number this numbers uh, game you know, numbers when it game comes to works. numbers and you're not mathematically inclined it's, it's, not, about mathematics. it's not about mathematics <laughs> it's about demand and supply thing the the, yeah <laughs> we did. so we definitely we need all. yeah <laughs> we would actually we tried but Your you know quadratic it, it didn't well. really <laughs> yeah it didn't improve <laughs> <group. Yeah. laughs> but thank you very much guys for joining us uh, on the discussion zone um well for you out there thank you so much as well if you have anything you want to top up do so through our facebook page africa global radio or you can leave a comment on the video uh it would be uploaded on youtube africa global radio subscribe to our youtube channel if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like it subscribe and share